it. This is something we've been discussing on the show because it's a bit of a spillover effect from those racial disparities we're talking about in terms of delinquencies here as more people dealing with the pandemic could be employment loss uh, and seeing those issues take place in terms of actually paying uh, those mortgages here the longer this pandemic drags on. And joining us now with more on that out of a new report from CoreLogic, it's CoreLogic's principal uh, economist here, Molly Basil, joins us now. And Molly, it's an interesting new report because this is something we've been keeping on our eyes, or our eyes glued to, is the delinquency rate. And your guys' report shows that that has risen substantially here. So how bad uh, is that delinquency rate here getting now? Well, in uh, our newest report showed that uh, in June, the serious delinquency rate, that's the uh, percent of mortgages that are 90 days or more past due, was the highest uh, in more than five years. Now, that's uh, as, as um, y- you know, homeowners are experiencing job loss or income loss. You know, they're having difficulty making those uh, mortgage payments. You know, in April, we saw the 30-day delinquencies spike up. In May, the 60-day delinquencies. And now in July, in June, the uh, 90-day delinquencies. So it's working the way through, its way through that pipeline. I mean, when you think about it working the way through the pipeline, it was an issue we raised back uh, in March and April when this first hit. We had a few discussions there in terms of uh, government officials answering how bad this could get, because there were a lot of fears that these dominoes would start falling, similar to what we saw play out in the 08, 09 recession on the housing front. But I guess, how would you see the data now stacking up and comparing, I guess, the risk tied to that actually playing out? Well, unlike the last recession, we've got this forbearance program. So the forbearance program, uh, which has been, uh, you know, opted into by millions and millions of Americans or by by millions of homeowners, um, that's going to keep borrowers, homeowners from moving on into foreclosure and losing their homes. So that's the big difference here. Even though they're seeing the delinquencies uh, mounting, um, that doesn't take into account those uh, uh, homeowners that are in forbearance. I mean, I would push back on that, too, because that has been the idea that the forbearance programs would help. And that would be true if we see a rebound in economic activity. We see unemployment rates continue to fall at the rate they are. But I guess there are fears that once we hit these winter months or later in the fall, even, we might see a reversal in terms of both the economic recovery as well as the improving health outlook here in the U.S. And if that were to happen, I I guess I would just call back into question how helpful those forbearance uh, initiatives might be if you get to the end uh, of your of your mortgage year, uh, or if Americans can't catch back up on maybe getting a little bit of relief in the short term. Well, that's right. That's where the real risk lies there. Um, if the um, job market doesn't improve, uh, if the forbearance programs end, and um, then we'd see uh, borrowers uh, foreclosing, losing their homes, and uh, y- you know we estimate that if uh, without um, further improvements in the economy that we could see the serious delinquencies go from where they were in June to double that by the end of 2022. And then another risk would be if those uh, borrowers are losing their homes or being sold in foreclosure sales, that that would put some downward pressure on home prices. And that would be, I guess, my next question there in terms of pairing what we saw in the CARES Act in terms of forbearance and, and mortgage relief versus what Trump has tried to do on his own uh, in executive orders, because there have been questions about how wide reaching some of these might be, since obviously it's tricky to get every mortgage lender out there to agree to some of these uh, relief initiatives. So I mean, when we talk about the scale of how helpful these have been, I guess, in, in making sure that the delinquencies you're discussing here, though they are rising, not reaching disastrous levels, how helpful have they been in your assessment of how far reaching? Well, at this point, we haven't really seen enough time pass to, to um, have uh, mortgages go into foreclosure yet. So the pandemic really only took hold in March. Um, and so there hasn't been enough time. Our data goes through June um, to see these uh, loans go anywhere further than the 90-day delinquency. So time will tell on that. But again, millions of homeowners or home borrowers um, have uh, taken advantage of this forbearance program. So that's going to help them stay out of foreclosure. I suppose there's also another big thing uh, to bring up here too, uh, whether it's not the forbearance aspect of this, but also the fact that mortgage rates continue to fall. We saw them fall to, uh, at least on the 30-year fix, uh, a record low of 2.86, according to Freddie Mac. Um, And that would be the ninth time that we've seen that rate reach a new low in 2020. So, I mean, I guess, as we were discussing in our previous segment here, there is the the opportunity on the table to refinance 
on top of all this, too. So, I mean, how does that maybe alleviate some of the risks, some of the pressures we're discussing when we do have those rates moving lower? Oh, yeah. Look, anything somebody can do to bring down their monthly mortgage payment, especially when they're facing a cut in their uh, um, income, will really help them uh, be able to make those payments every month. And I mean, when we talk about that moving forward here, obviously, the, the direction that we've heard from the Fed seems to be they're not even thinking about raising rates. It's been the discussion that we've heard from Fed Chair Jerome Powell over the last few policy meetings and the updates we've gotten from them. An interesting inflation data, though, here today, I guess, would raise the, uh, the suspicion or the idea that maybe we would get closer to surpassing that 2% target that they noted they'd be flexible on. But if that were to happen and we do see rates rising here for, for those new buyers hitting in the market, obviously the real estate market has been very hot, one of the few standouts in terms of sectors not seeing a big fall off in the pandemic. How might that change the delinquency rates moving forward and the dynamics at play here uh, in the space we're discussing? Well, I mean, even though you might see mortgage rates increase, which we we actually don't see that happening anytime soon. We expect mortgage rates to stay incredibly low um, through this year and into next year. But if you would see them uh, increase a bit, they wouldn't go up by much. I mean, historically, you know, we're talking about hitting new lows here. Um, you know, historically, even before the pandemic, mortgage rates were incredibly low. And that's a good point. And as we're talking about here, I mean, it's just the early days of the pandemic. But as you noted, I mean, all this stacks up. We've seen that on the unemployment front and how uh, weekly unemployment claims stack up to have historically very high unemployment rates. And we're also watching, as you said, those delinquency rates ticking higher. We'll see what happens as we move along and if this recovery can stay intact. But for the time being, Molly Basil, CoreLogic Principal Economist, appreciate you taking the time to chat. Okay. All right. Thank you.